Madam President, members, if you could please indulge me for just a moment to read a few stanzas from a favorite poem. Let America be America again. Let it be the dream it used to be. Let it be the pioneer on the plain, seeking a home where he himself is free. Let America be the dream the dreamers dreamed. Let it be that great, strong land of love where never kings connive nor tyrants scheme that any man be crushed by one above. Oh, let my land be a land where liberty is crowned with no false patriotic wreath, but opportunity is real and life is free. Equality is in the air we breathe. Madam President, members, many of you will recognize that poem by Langston Hughes, and if you're familiar with it, you know that I abridged it somewhat significantly. It's interlaced with thoughts of alienation and disaffection from these ideals and beautiful words of our country. But I left those out on purpose because this is not a day about being alienated and disaffected from the state and the country that we all love. I asked a question of this chamber two years ago, sitting up in the front, holding up a photo of myself and Richard, who's with us today. I asked who was helped by the proposal that was then before the body. And it was clear to me that it helped no one and it harmed many. And maybe this poem is a bit of a metaphor for what's true today because that day I felt tremendous pain. I felt excluded. Friends, friends that I had in this chamber saw fit to cut me out of my own state's constitution, myself and Richard. But my position didn't prevail, and so a conversation with Minnesotans was launched. So in an odd way, I'm kind of grateful because we had an amazing conversation with Minnesotans. And we learned, like we always knew, that Minnesotans are good people. We learned that Minnesotans, when given a chance, understand the values that unite us are stronger than those that divide us, and they're so much more important. Madam President, I am proud to be a Minnesotan today. Today we have the power, the awesome, humbling power to make dreams come true. What do we dream of? As kids growing up, what do we all dream of when we start our lives? A good life, a happy home, falling in love with someone, sharing that life, a loving family. And marriage says nothing. Marriage says family like nothing else. Well, I'm a lucky guy. I've met the person I can't live without. Richard and I have a love that I can't even begin to describe. And we have a loving and supportive family. And because of our marriage in California in 2008, our family had a transformation and formed a connection. They had been so supportive of us all throughout, but through that celebration and that ritual, a connection and an understanding to us came about that we didn't anticipate. And we've been supported through triumphs and through adversity. And as a strong couple, we've been able to provide support to our family most recently, last Thursday morning. We had the unbelievable joy of the arrival of a brand new great nephew, Lucho. Rejoicing we had. But here in Minnesota, Richard and I are legal strangers to each other. How can that be okay? Colleagues, you know and love so many people in your lives just like Richard and me. Good, hardworking Minnesotans, playing by the rules, trying to build a good life, taking care of each other, raising kids, contributing in so many ways to their, their communities. 
Members, I've heard a lot of things said today. I promise you, I promise you, nothing will change. We are redefining nothing. We are joining and affirming the thing we all cherish and prize and value the most. Accept that for thousands of families, life will be better. That will change. We will be treating people fairly. And we will be removing the barriers they have had to the full joys life has to offer. And in so doing, we strengthen ourselves and we strengthen our democracy. There's no limit to love. No limit. It's not going to be all used up. It only expands. Madam President, members, we do this for ourselves to be sure. We also do it in memory of the crusaders who passed before us our own president, late great President Alan Speer and his partner June, who 20 years ago stood in this chamber and argued that the Human Rights Act be expanded to recognize him and his life and his ability to freely access the opportunities and prosperity that Minnesota has to offer. I was in the chamber that day. Then I got to go over to the House chamber and watch Karen Clark lead the effort in the House, the victorious effort in the House. And Jack Baker and Mike McConnell, 20 years ago, or more than 20 years ago, in 1970, tried to get married but were rebuffed by the courts and laws of our state. And we have Doug Benson, his partner Dwayne. Doug stands at the top of the steps with the iPad saying marriage. They're here today, too. And they're currently trying to pursue their rights in court, but after today, they're not going to have to. Sharon Kowalski and Sharon Thompson, Minnesotans who, over 20 years ago, were torn apart in their moment of crisis, their darkest moment, darkest hour, torn apart from each other because of the laws. Or my young friend, Aaron, and his fiance, Kevin, we're going to get married on August 1st, and they're here today. But members, think of the thousands of young people, or even those who aren't yet even born. They'll be raised in a Minnesota where they can grow up and fall in love, decide to share and build a life with that person, and the excitement they'll be able to have when they race home to tell mom and dad or mom and mom, or dad and dad, that they're going to get married, and they're going to have a wedding, and their families will celebrate, and rejoice, and agree to support them, and hold them accountable as a couple and as a family. Members, we do this for the people we hear outside in the halls of this great hall, the People's Building, who are here on both sides. This is democracy, and they're here. talking about their hopes. We hear them cheering. <laughs> their hopes and their dreams and their aspirations. We have an awesome responsibility and it's very humbling to be inside this chamber right now. When I think about those young people who get to grow up in Minnesota and get married like that's the way it always was, I think now there is a legacy we can be proud of. Even after we are long gone from this chamber, our names have been forgotten, we will have left Minnesota a better place. That is really why we're here. That is our job. So members, please, please vote yes. Vote yes for freedom. Vote yes for family, for commitment, for responsibility, for dignity. Vote yes for love. Thank you, Madam President. Senator Bach.